Mrs. Zalevna? Here. Mr. Cora? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Kearney? Mr. Kopeck? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mr. Mariano? Here. Thank you. Mr. Seltzer, any recognitions tonight? Uh, actually, we actually do have um, one, actually two. Uh, first off, Jason Deichler, a 1995 graduate, has just been named commander of the USS Pittsburgh. So one of our CV graduates is now the commander of the USS Pittsburgh. Uh, so congratulations to him, to his family, and uh, that's great for the district. So that's, a, that's a great thing. And also, it is uh, School Board Recognition Month, and so I'd personally like to thank all of you on behalf of the district, and the faculty, and, and staff of your efforts that you do for us. Uh, anybody who's willing to donate their time, and we know it's a donation of time, and sometimes it's a thankless job. But really want to thank you guys for your efforts in coming here two, three nights a week and supporting our students and staff. And we greatly appreciate your efforts. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Scott. And um, <coughs> that's my recognition. At this time, I'd like to ask anybody in the audience if you'd like to step up to the microphone and give us your name and uh, address. If you have any comments, you'd be welcome to play. You know one tonight? Okay. One, two, three, out. Yeah. On to our superintendent's report. Uh, my superintendent's report I'm going to pass on to Brenda Wineland because she's like to give a little presentation for everybody. First of all, I'd like to um, introduce to you our newest Coup Service Director that is working with me now at CV, and this is Daphne Hiles. Well, Daphne. Daphne. She well. comes from, she's been with us for two, two years, and she has come to CV from the eastern part of the state, so this is a, a fresh new beginning for her. <laughs> and she is going to present you with Nutrislice today. So she's going to show you a little bit about what our new menu system does and how it works. Thank you. Uh, so if anyone wants to pull up a phone and follow along with me, this is actually a digital menu that will be implemented. Um, the website does have it online right now under the nutrition department. Um, so if anyone wants to see what's on the menu throughout the day, if you want to see breakfast, what's for lunch, you can see the current month. Um, and so if you want to go to the app store, you can search. What did I spell it right? Nutrislice, and you'll see School Lunch by Nutrislice. This is a partnership the nutrition group has created this year um, to implement um, some more um, innovations to bring us into the new 21st century. So we're not just printing menus for families, um, we're bringing in the new generation of parents. And so you can download the app and open it. So here we will look for, if I can get a spell right, Charleston Valley School District. <laughs> And then you'll agree to the terms. And so as you can see, our school logo and the nutrition logo is available on there. So you can look for a menu. We can look at this building, the intermediate. And for lunch today, they had popcorn chicken bowl with corn, or they have a GC cheeseburger, or a much fuller garden salad. Um, something I really love about this program is that it contains nutritional information. So if you want to know exactly what dietary information is offered to your child, you can see all of that. You can rate it. You can give a review. You can let us know your thoughts um, on the offerings that we have for the students. Some of the items have pictures. Now, could you speak up just a little bit? Sure. Thank you. Um, and then, okay, so here's a picture you can see of the juicy cheeseburger that we serve to the students. That's every Tuesday in the elementary schools. Um, and then also, you can find, where where'd it go? You can filter out allergens. So if your child is allergic to wheat, if they're allergic to soy, if they're allergic to shellfish, you can actually click on something and go to today's lunch. And OK, nothing has milk in it. But if I looked at pizza, OK, that didn't work. Um, if you took out egg, there's egg in the cute pizza crust, right? Mm -hmm. So then you should be able to can you show it to them for the month? Well, this is on the app. It's yeah, not going to show it. 
Um, but it <coughs> takes out items that are no longer available for your student to have and cross them out. And that's also available on the full site version. So if you go to the mobile website, you can select <coughs> the allergens, it'll remove them. And then if you want to print the page, it'll actually not even show them at all. So you only see what's available and what's safe for your child to have. Um, it's a great tool for nurses, for students with diabetic issues. They can see carb counts, they can see calorie intakes. Um, so it's, it's a great tool to bring the community more closer to the food service department and it offers some transparency so they know exactly what is being fed to their students on any given day. And we update this so if there is a issue with delivery and um, something doesn't come in, if a vendor changes it on us or if there's a recall and we have to do a last minute update to the menu, you can see what is on the menu for that day. So if we find out about something that we can no longer serve, we'll change it on the website, and that'll be more updated than the one that you get printed out at the beginning of the month. So that keeps everybody in the loop. Any questions? Anything to ask? So I do have a question. So this is a way to engage with the community, primarily. Absolutely. So is there an analogous tool or app that engages with the students? If they want to download the app, they're more than welcome to. Uh, the last district I came from had an iPad for every student, so we pre-downloaded our onto the iPad, so whenever they had free time in their class, they could see what was for lunch. They could rate what they didn't like, what they did like. They so that they were able to rate that, so I was going to ask about, are the, is there an opportunity to give feedback? Absolutely, and then we get to see those analytics. Um, we actually launched the app in December, but it wasn't communicated enough to the parents. So now that we're in January, we're able to see the increase in usage. We're able to see if they downloaded it or if they're using the website, if they're leaving comments, if they're looking up straight on the app from the app store, or if they're going through the district website on the link that we offer. So have we communicated that to students that they, I know, I know that there's been parent communication. It's been a soft sell right now. <laughs> we communicated it to parents and to teachers, so we kind of wanted them to kind of see what it was. And we've gotten some feedback from parents a little bit here and there. And so we're still trying to do the whole paper menu that's put on the website so they can still print it out and stick it to the refrigerator because the one that's printed from Nutrislice isn't really refrigerator friend, I guess Chuck calls it, <laughs> as we like. So um, we're kind of doing both right now. We'd like to get to the point where we get more feedback from the kids, the students. That's what we really want. We want to know what do you like, what do you don't like. Right, I would think that would be, I would think that they'd be out, it, out on this all the time. Um, so I think we're going to try and start at the middle school and see if we can work with the kids there that we can get the, the app on the phones or their iPads or whatever they have so we can work with them. And could, is it also available on website? Could they get yes. on their laptops? And you can go right on Nutrition or CB's website under yeah. the Nutrition Group page and you can see that it's right there. So if you go to Nutrition, this is the mobile version, but if you go to where the links are, normally this will be on the right-hand side where you see the link to the regular PDF menus. You can just see, check on our new menus, or digital menus on Nutrislice, and it'll take you to the website. <coughs> and again, you can look and find your school. They can see what other schools are having that use this website, um, but mostly just so they can see what's going on. So currently, our outreach to the students is our YAC meetings that we have to get their input. What did you say? Pardon me? We have a youth advisory council that we get for the kids to have a one-on-one. -on -one. What did you say? Oh, what was that again? <laughs> That's just what nutrition calls them. It's a youth advisory council. It's essentially a focus group, so we have that one-to-one. -one. But again, as a focus group, it's just a limited number of students. So there's not more, it's not a broad reach. So this will enable us to access more thoughts from the kids, more opinions from kids that don't necessarily buy and are included in the YAC meetings, um, but kids that pack and they want to see stuff more from home that they can have offered in the cafeteria. So what is the rough timeline to engage with students in a more, not a softer cell, a harder cell? Right, that's what we really want. Now that Daphne's here with me, <laughs> I can get to more things. So we're hoping to get to that this month where we can engage the kids at the middle school and, and get them going with it. Mm -hmm. and really, really start using the features that are in there. Could we uh, see some data at some point? Yeah. Sure. Yes, absolutely. We have a little, just we know how many people are actually using it now. Daphne has that little app on there that tells you yes. 
Um, I look at the menu and I update it. At the beginning of December, we had 230 some usages, so visits to the site. Um, mostly that was me just refreshing the page and making sure that it was working. <laughs> um, and then at the, at, I think it was earlier this week, we had 900 some usages. So in just two weeks, we've increased significantly, which is a great thing. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to see that. Thank you. Yeah, continue to progress. Absolutely. Um, I just had one other question. The the allergy thing and, and do's and don'ts, that, I think that's probably one of the most effective parts of the whole program. Uh, if a kid comes up to the checkout line mm -hmm. and they have something on their plate that they're not supposed to eat, what happens? That actually happened just not yesterday, the day before. I was at the um, intermediate school for breakfast and a little girl came up with a gluten allergy. It pops up for Merrill Edge, tells us that she has a gluten allergy, so the cashier came back and she said, this little girl's here and she's got gluten on her plate, what do I do? I said, you're going to have to pull her aside and tell her that, you know, that's an allergen that she's not allowed to have. Fortunately, I was there and I actually took her over to the nurse and I'm like, because this is, I guess this is one of the pro problem children is she keeps coming up with, she doesn't want to eat what's on her <laughs> menu. So that was taken care of and handled right away. So right, we sir. do, there's a pop-up right there that says no. <clears throat> That's great. It's great that it's there. It's also, I, I, would, I would emphasize that you train that staff yes. person there yes. to be aware of what to do. Yes. Um, and they do know that. It's, it's just so that, critical. Right. Yeah, I mean, especially if we're providing the information now, right. then the district is somewhat held responsible right. for if that would get through the system. Absolutely. And so, that's why I took that little girl with me over to the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> so, I do not want that. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely that critical that the staff knows what to do and, and that the system works. Yeah, yeah, it does sound like it's a training training opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what is the plan to train the rest of the... They do know. It's yeah. just that when they see us in the building, they, they like yeah. us to handle that more than they have to, so they just come to us. Because I guess it was a continuing issue that I wasn't aware of yet, so now that we're aware of it, we know, and, and uh, the nurse took care of it, she called mom. And as long as we have updated allergy information, we can stay on top of it. Some parents think that if I send in allergy information when they're kindergarten, they're good through senior year. But a lot of times allergies change over the course of a few years, and so it's nice to have updated information. And now that I'm here and working with Brenda, we can work on that with the nurses' department to get that information updated into our system so that we know to protect those particular students. Great. That's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you. We're really excited about yeah. it. I think it's going to be a great, yeah, a great function uh, for our parents, our kids, yes. and uh, keep the move, the district moving towards the technology age. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So I have some flyers here for you, just if you want to take it out and download that app at home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, with iPhone and Android users, you can see it in the app store. Any questions this month? Are we you got it. I, the only other thing I would say in, in, in regards to the, the type of device they use, mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I'm a big believer in this, and my kids are out of the school district, but I think the phones are a distraction in our schools. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather them have it downloaded onto the device that we provide them Absolutely. and not have them get used to using their phone as a, as, a, as a substitute. I would much rather have them use the device that we provide them and keep their phones out of the picture as much as possible. I think phones are a problem within school districts. Oh, cool. And we can, so we can work with you. Spot back there. That's only my opinion. So, you know, this is a board. I don't just like to stay So, but that, that, that would be something I would, you know, like to see. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yep. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. On to our solicitor's report. Uh, no report, but I note for the record that we had an executive session in advance of tonight's meeting to discuss personnel matters and uh, two litigation matters. We apologize for our, our tardiness, but there were a lot of matters to discuss, and thank you for that. Okay, uh, can I get an approve, a motion to approve the minutes from January 9th, 2018, our meeting from that point? Someone? So moved. Mr. Corner first. Second. Mr. Kaczynski, no, second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. On to our informational agenda. Uh, anything from the Education Foundation, Mr. Seltz? Actually, I think we have a meeting with uh, Mrs. Fogorski on Friday. Uh, Friday morning at 9 o'clock, so we'll probably have more information in the next meeting. Thank you. 
Pathfinder, Mr. Kramer. Um, well, we had a meeting this past week. Um, we're in getting ready to prepare our budget and uh, get that over to the districts. Um, one large item on our budget this year is we have, uh, I was at the school um, over the week, and we have a lot of buckets above the drop ceilings in, in, at the Pathfinder School. And um, the situation is getting worse. Uh, we have a roofing purchasing agent, I guess. It's, um, they, they'll oversee it. They're a construction management firm, um, Garland, that um, they'll go out and quote, um, get quotes on repairs. And um, the initial round came in between four and five hundred thousand dollars for um, the roof that needs done. Now we don't have that at Pathfinder. I mean, we have um, our reserves. Our capital reserves are four CDs of about seventy-five thousand dollars each. Uh, so we have about three hundred thousand um, dollars. We're going to go out and it, you know, Principal Fredo was meeting with the AIU. And, and talking about the long-range planning um, for Pathfinder, um, we really want to evaluate before we put a 30-year roof on a building to make Absolutely. sure what the plan is for for the building. Um, our enrollment is strong; it's it's really good. We were at 74 kids, um, and he had three more tours coming, um, so enrollment's good. Uh, the AIU is excited about the upcoming year. We we have. Um, a uh, program that we started last year that Principal Fredo started with, um, it, it's training some of the, the kids that are over the age of 18 in um, more of hospitality training and uh, so they can work at the, the hotels and, and cleaning and uh, custodian type work there. And, and that's been well received and so enrollment's going, going well, but we just need to evaluate this roof issue and mm -hmm. if you know, if we if, if it has to go forward, we have to determine how we raise the other two hundred thousand dollars. And you know, it's it's owned by a consortium of the districts. And it, you know, we're what we're doing is it, you know, Dick Rose, who's been there for years, um, he's doing some calculations for me that he's going to bring to the next meeting for me to see how much each school district bought in to pay off the additional bond, bond issue. And, and, you know, in, in his interpretation of the documents, that's how much percentage, you know, that's what each district's percentage of that $200 delta, $200,000 delta should be, um, you know, but that's, we have to evaluate the document, evaluate what the overall cost is. Um, I asked him to go back to Garland. I, I actually want to talk to Jason Day um, and see what he would, um, you know, what he would suggest about looking at it as far as, you know, I think this year what we should do is just do some repairs and, and evaluate it and see, you know, what the annual cost of repairs that they estimate is going to be. And, and if that's not going to be a, a huge number, we take a little bit of time rather than jumping the gun and going at a, a full roof replacement. So, but that's, um, the good news is, you know, all districts have paid their, their maintenance fees. We're up to date on that. This year's billings are going out this month. Um, our audit will be done by January 31st, and so we'll pick that up and deliver it to the district. And, um, but we really do have to watch this roof issue. You know, one thing I was thinking about, Eric, after, after you had mentioned that in your, in your notes, um, you know, that building serves such a meaningful purpose. I, I just wonder if there isn't somebody out there, if we advertise the fact that this need is out there, <clears throat> that, right. that a, a significant person wouldn't step up for that need and help. I uh, thought about that as well, like a, a specific fundraiser or, or search for a, for a grant or, yeah. it, you know, that I think we really do need to go down that path. I mean, I know there's, and I, I won't say the company name or the individual out there, but I know there is a roofing company owner in, in our community, not necessarily this community, but in the Pittsburgh Maybe, community, yeah. that is extremely charitable. Yeah. Right. And it's, you know, he's he's done some amazing things. <coughs> so maybe if, if we could just get his attention. Yeah, you know? I was thinking of maybe getting a meeting set up with him or, yeah. you know. I mean, it, it's, it. obviously you're helping uh, kids <coughs> that, you know, have, have been, you know, have a challenge presented to them already, right? And, and it would, you know, from a business perspective, what better PR, you know? Right. So, 
Yeah, it's something to think he about. He can self-perform that. Too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so you could maybe just take the profit out of it and pay for the cost right. and, and get some great public relations. Yeah. So, something to think about. Yeah, so that, that's what our focus is right now over there. So I'll, I'll keep everyone up to date on it. Thank you. And I was uh, elected president again. Congratulations. <laughs> Rewards will be later. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that report. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Core, our, our parkway yes. report. Uh, uh, three or four items this evening. Uh, parkway West got a very nice substantial grant from uh, Duquesne Light, <laughs> and it's for the uh, several of the contracting areas, the program, design, and planning. And these uh, students are to build a tiny little home and it's going to be totally green technology. So hopefully, they said, it's supposed to be done by the spring. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, they also got a, a grant from the Lowe's Foundation of $5,000, and that is to improve the overall look of the campus. So there's two technology groups, the electrical system technology and the building construction technology. Those two groups are charged with uh, implementing that. Uh, also, they got uh, two large donations from two steel companies. They got 18,000 pounds of metal, which uh, comes out to about $13,000, and that's for the metal technology shop. And last but not least, they had a career exploitation day. They had about 700 students uh, attend, and uh, it was very successful. So, and then we're asking that you approve the operating budget in the Parkway. West uh, jointure budget this evening. So. And you've obviously vetted that, and how do you feel about that? Good. It's solid? Yes. Okay. And they're uh, embarking on two uh, possible new career classes in, in the healthcare industry, and it looks like uh, Highmark is going to partner up with uh, Parkway West, and they're talking some substantial monies, but that's on the planning that's stage. Great. At this point, yes. awesome. Okay. Thank, Thank you for your report. This is Leslie. Oh, oh, excuse me, one other thing. They asked me to give your wife and tell your wife that uh, they miss her. And they wanted to thank her for a wonderful three years of service. They, they said, make sure I tell you that. So. She enjoyed her time. And they said they enjoyed her. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. This is, this is Leslie. Uh, the second Shasta meeting of this school year is going to be on Thursday. Oh, good. So you'll update next week. Next meeting. The next meeting. All right, great. Thank you. Our finance committee met before our uh, executive session, and uh, Mr. Kaczynski, if you have a report, please. Sure. We discussed a lot, went through a lot of great stuff. Sure. Um, first thing we did is we reviewed our different funds and where they are currently. Uh, as of right now, everything looks to be on track. Uh, the reports that we are getting from Persina and Kim are excellent. They're concise, they're well organized, and they're doing a great job of keeping us apprised of everything going on. Uh, we're looking to have a five-year plan uh, presented to us in March, so that's great news. Uh, we reviewed our bill list. Uh, not only did we review the actual bill, but the actual uh, format of the report. Uh, it has been updated, and we will be receiving that uh, going forward. There is an arrangement uh, with Jordan Tax. Uh, it's regarding the school district code report. Uh, currently, that's something that is done in-house. Uh, basically, it's making sure that the properties are kind of on the fringes, making sure that they are in our actual district or vice versa. That's currently being done in-house. Uh, the proposal is to have it outsourced to Jordan Tax at a capped rate of $2,000 total. The feeling is uh, they could do it on a more efficient basis, and they actually have more data sources they could use uh, to do it more accurately. Uh, we are currently going to be putting out for RFP for our bidding supplies, so that was discussed. A lot, large chunk of time was uh, talking about our preliminary Act 1 budget, which is basically a very high level preliminary budget uh, at this point in time. It was recommended to us right now that we file for all of our exceptions to give us the greatest flexibility as we continue to uh, sharpen our pencils as we go through. Uh, we reviewed the key assumptions that were put into those, um, and then we will be voting on um, those actions later on in the meeting. Thank That's you. it.
<coughs> excellent summary of that. Of that okay, on to our consent agenda. Um, academics is up first. We're looking to approve the out-of-state conference for the teacher there, 6.1. If everybody would like to look through that and ask any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda. The 6.7 uh, is the, going to be the second reading of all the policies. Has everybody had an uh, opportunity to go through that? They're pretty straightforward. Yes. Yeah. yeah there, there's nothing in there that I saw that was a flag. Um, no recommended from PSBA. PSBA, yep. Yeah. So if nobody has any questions or comments, I'd like to get a motion to approve, uh, approve our consent agenda 6.1 through 6.7. So moved. Mrs. Lesnick first. Second. Mrs. I'll Mur second. Mrs. Murphy second. A little, little late to the gun there, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> so moved. Thank you. Our action discussion items, 7.1, the Parkway West General Operating Budget. This budget has to be approved by a roll call vote. Yes. And uh, the motion will read, a motion to approve the Parkway West General Operating Budget for 2018-2019 school year. The Parkway West, the Parkway General Operating Budget is $6,428,563. Chartiers Valley School District share is $505,337.05. Can I get a motion to approve that? So moved. Mr. Quorum, <coughs> first. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Lesnick. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Oh, roll call. I'm sorry. Okay, Mr. Mazzarini? Uh, that's a yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Lesnick? Yes. Mr. Cora? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Here, Mr. Kopak? Yes. Mrs. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Mariana? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's a unanimous vote. Okay, wonderful. On to 7.2, Parkway West Joint Jointure Budget. This motion is to approve the Parkway West Jointure Budget for the 2018-2019 school year. The Parkway Jointure Budget is $703,183. Chargers Valley share of that is $72,952.50. Can I get a motion to approve 7.2? So moved. Mr. Cora first. Second. Mr. Mariani second. All in favor? Oh, no, we'll call again. Yeah, here we go. Mr. Mazzarini? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Alesna? Yes. Mr. Cora? Yes, thank you. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Kopak? Yes. Mrs. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Mariano? Yes. Thank you. That's a unanimous vote once again. Okay, 7.3. <coughs> this is a motion to approve the AIU Joint Purchase Agreement. This motion is to approve the joint purchasing agreement with the Allegheny County Intermediate Unit and to appoint Kim Hartnett as the primary representative and Terry Pistelli as the alternate. Can I get a motion? So moved. Mr. Cora first. Second. Mr. Kramer second. second. Yes. Roll call, please. Mr. Mazzarini? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Zelesnik? Yes. Mr. Cora? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Kopek? Yes. Mrs. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Mariano? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's a unanimous vote. 7.4, approve agreement and general release. This motion is to approve the agreement and general release between Churchill's Valley School District and the Howard W. and Howard W. Hale, contingent on Howard W. Hale's acceptance and approval of the terms of the agreement. Does everybody have an understanding of what happened there? And what that is that, that agreement is regarding? Okay, can I get that's just a regular vote, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, can I get a motion to approve that? So moved. Mr. Kaczynski, first. Second. Mr. Core, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. 7.5 Approve the preliminary 2018 2019 budget process. 
This motion is to allow the preliminary Act 1 budget for the 2018-2019 school year as reviewed on January 23rd, 2018 to, meet, to be made available to the public for review in accordance with the Act 1. The motion is to allow Secretary to the Board to give not less than 10 days notice to the public of the meeting at which the 2018-2019 preliminary Act 1 budget shall be adopted and a motion to set the date of Tuesday, February 13th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. at the Central Administration Building for the adoption of for the preliminary 2018-2019 School District Act 1 budget. Wow. <laughs> Can I get a motion on that? So Mr. Kopech, second. first. Mr. Kramer, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. 7.6, approve the Allegheny County Transportation MOU. This motion is to approve the Allegheny County Department of Human Services, Office of Children, Youth and Families, ESA Foster Care, CYF, MOU, and Transportation Plan. Does everybody have an understanding of what that's all about? Scott, would you like to go into a little detail? <laughs> sure. Uh, and Don has reviewed the MOU uh, ahead of time. Basis talks about transportating um, the students who are in foster care. So if they go to foster care in another district, how that cost of transporting that student is going to be determined and divided up among all parties, <clears throat> the districts and the county. Um, when we have a student who's homeless, a homeless student, we still are responsible for transporting that student, no matter where that shelter is, back to our school district. Um, so this just continues that with kids who are in foster care. And this is not unique to our district. Um, one of these has been introduced to by every single school district. In fact, I think you, if I remember correctly, you may have approved this previously subject to the solicitor making some changes because we had found some errors in it that were corrected and now they're corrected and ready to go. So I, I, I do recall that. Yes, thank you. Okay. Can I get a motion? Second. Mrs. Lesnick first. Second. Mr. Kaczynski second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Before we step to the uh, final public comment section, I would just like to make a comment. Um, in this passing of this preliminary budget that was presented to us, uh, there is the, uh, in the, in that motion, there is the opportunity for the board to leave itself open to raise taxes to, uh, to the maximum level within the state guidelines. We left that flexibility within this budget to be able to allow the district to be able to manage and, and, and see where things do actually end up. When we pass a preliminary budget, it is exactly that. The numbers, we can't, we can't make decisions based on the numbers that we currently have. There are a lot of things that happen between now and June 30th when that budget will actually take place. So please understand from a community perspective, and I don't want to ever, uh, you know, <coughs> believe me, our, our goal is to manage this district as efficiently as, as, as we can with, with the uh, overall most important thing of educating children and, and having a safe environment to do that but we we also need to understand that it's a business and it, and it has to run and it takes money to do that but we we passed this budget with the uh leaving ourselves the opportunity to manage that number and that's i just wanted to get that on public record because i don't want to have somebody come back to me and say you never talked about taxes so i'm talking about taxes okay. thank you for saying that yeah. And at this point in time, if someone would like to make a public comment, please step up and give us your thing. Hi, I'm Michelle Sedlak. I live at 1595 Spreading Out Drive, Pennsylvania. And I just wanted to point out, I was the first person to acknowledge you for School Board Appreciation Month. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Last week, hello. <laughs> I just wanted to say, I was ahead of the curve. <laughs> and uh, thank you once again for everything you did. And I, I really want to be on some sort of a committee to get you a roof. Okay. So we'll talk right, about be the great. best way to make that happen. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> um, anybody else? Public comment? 
Uh, two things that I heard from the community, uh, two big thank yous. One, the heaters and the temporary walkways. I've heard from a few people. They're saying they are a big help. So I want to thank everybody for their help in uh, coming up with that idea and bringing it to fruition. I um, understand also, too, there were a set of uh, handles put on the gym doors that was causing a lot of draft coming into the gym. Having those put on made a big, big, big difference. So again, a thank you for the team and, and making those little things that really make big differences. And there is a big difference when those heaters aren't working. <clears throat> yeah. uh, we, we got them up and running. Uh, we, the, when, they, when they gave it to us, they were actually the wrong extension cords that we got. So when we got the right extension cords, they didn't kick off mm -hmm. as much. So that, um, yeah, so it's, it makes a noticeable difference through that area. Yeah. Great. Good. And then one other thing before we adjourn, I'd just like to have the board take into consideration, uh, and I think we'll do the actual voting when we have the construction team with us at the next meeting, uh, but I would like the board to please uh, consider what we want to do with the envelope testing. Okay, we have to make a decision here at, at some point. Um, for the community's sake, the envelope testing has to do with a, a uh, a test that is done on the on the construction process to find out how efficient the spaces are being uh, built. Um, hey, I'll give you my opinion. I'm ready now. Yeah. So we entered into a, we entered into agreement early on. Uh, it was kind of a joke when we did it. I would say it was new science, new technology that was trying to be uh, brought and introduced to the district while this construction process was going on. Um, we found it to be somewhat flawed uh, and not really what it was sold to be early on. Uh, we met pretty much early on put a stop to the testing because we did not feel it was a, there was any value in it. Therefore, uh, the contract that we have in place, we are negotiating with those folks that uh, we put it into and we will be issued a credit if we decide what we want to do. So. Um, between now and the, our next meeting, just consider what we want to do, and I'll, I'll send something out, and we can, uh, and, and, and kind of give you the scenario of what the dollar figure looks like. Scott, I, and I, can, I can do that. that. I can do that now. Yeah, if you'd like, because yeah, that'd be great. With, I worked with Jason Day, so if, uh, he's basically we, we determined there would be three options. Uh, option number one is not do any testing whatsoever. So we, we end all testing where we are. That means there's 22 tests rem remaining. Um, the price is $2,341, $2,341 per test, so that would give us approximately $51,502 um, if, if we just did not do any more testing. Another option would be just final tests only, and that would be, we'd get a credit of about $21,000 for that if we only did final testings. And then option three would be just final tests of middle school, because it's an actual you know, new construction, it's not added on to other uh, parts of the building, and that would give us uh, roughly a savings of 37, 37 five, uh, roughly, would be, would be that option. Okay. Um, so Jason, I thought we'd give you at least three options to, to think about, or, you know, and it can be any variation of that. It's $2,341 per test. And that's separate and aside from the spot checks that are. That's separate and aside from the spot checks. Those are <coughs> continuing to happen as building is happening. What happens if the testing reveals an envelope issue? And that's the part of the challenge because even if it does reveal that, then there's going to be a, 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 a decision that would have to be made by us and our construction team as to what the cost would be to either say to the prime contractor or the subcontractor responsible for the flaw, you have to go fix it, but then there's going to be pushback from them saying it could be this, it could be that, until we get into it, what, what is actually the cause of it. Um, so you, you almost, you know, there, there is a cost, there, there, even with the cost of the test, there could be a cost to the fix and, and who's responsible and, and, and what portion of it. So. There's a challenge there, even if we found a flaw, how much would it cost to actually get it fixed without us doing the test? You know, so. And also the question runs into is that I think the middle school was the only, the only building was actually modeled because the high school had, had existing construction to it, so I don't even know if they actually came up with a number for the high school, if I'm going back from my recollection. So I know there was a number. So how it's far away are we? Yeah, there's an energy target mm -hmm. and, and what that would be. And, so the question is, so what does that mean 
if you miss that target? And how much do you have to miss that target to say that it's faulty workmanship and it wasn't put together correctly? Um, and, and those are scenarios that, you know, Jason can't figure out because he didn't do the test. So, you know, there's, there's all that. So let's say it was, I, don't know, I think 51 may have been that number. So what happens if it's, you know, 57 or 61? You know, what does that mean, or if it, you know, whatever direction it has to go, if it's 10, what does that really mean? Yeah. And how much are they going to push back and say, no, we built it, to, we built it how it was designed to be built? Yeah. So that's, that's going to be the question. <laughs> it's how of, accurate that really is. It's, it's such uncharted science and technology that they're, they're basing their number and their modeling under that I think the challenge would be to prove it, you know, that you're at fault. So. And you're going to see savings, you're going to see natural energy savings from our original building because of the newer equipment, because sure, of the design. Absolutely. So you are going to see some savings just in that one. The lower square footage. Yeah, lower I mean, it's going to be significant savings, I think. So. And there's, there, was That's no, right. there was no, you know, promise of any guaranteed savings or anything. There was nothing of that sort in that. No, not in writing. Exactly. Well, you heard what our construction manager said last or two weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, they, they, we're the only ones that are using this. Yeah. And, and, the, and the nine school director friends I called that all did uh, new buildings, none of them have used it. Right. Yeah. yeah, that didn't bother me so much because we are, we are <coughs> using a very innovative approach to this building design. So just because we're the first one out, that doesn't bother me so much. What, what I really need to understand, I think what we need to understand as a board is what are the consequences of doing this? If, if, you know, what are the unintended consequences or intended of uh, all three of these scenarios? I don't, I'm just not sure what, like who owns the building envelope? <coughs> who owns that? And the integrity of the building envelope? We, I mean, we own it as owners, right? Yeah, we do. Right. <laughs> So we, like, what's the most prudent way to ensure that that's, that that's maintained? Yeah. So why don't we, you know, we have the numbers. We have the numbers. Let's keep it in mind. We can, yeah. you know, think about it. When we have our construction team in front of us at the next meeting, then we can present that question yeah. and then make a decision. We'll put it on, on the agenda for that night. Okay. Okay? Yep. Yeah, that would be perfect. Are there alternatives to envelope testing that might be... Yeah, I, you know, more, you know, not, not under question because uh, it's new technology, or whatever. Proven, proven methods of testing finished construction to make sure that this workmanship is correct. And I think actually the other piece of the of the contract is so much more meaningful because it actually is, you know, he has an infrared gun. He goes around and tests windows, tests roofs, tests corners to see if there's any heat loss. And those kinds of things are far more, I think valuable because you can actually fix it while you're building it. But to try to test something after it's already built, just it just doesn't make much sense because you'd have to start ripping walls out to fix it anyway. You know, he's, he's, do, he's doing the valuable stuff and that's going to continue. So yeah, you said, so this, you just called it the other part of the contract. What are we calling that part of the contract? Um, it's, I think it's just it's yeah. inspections. Yeah, it's the it's inspection, inspection portion of it, on-site management. Right. And that was roughly around 20 Thousand. Yeah, I mean, he's been here and he's done that, and that's that's really proven to be valuable. I mean, and that's still a play. We're yes. not yeah. Being yeah. 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 Right. He's you know he's he's been able to stop a contractor and say this isn't right while it's being built, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and the workers know he's there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's watching. Them. It makes everybody a little more. Twenty thousand dollars doesn't sound like that much for this building. No, like, I, mean, I wonder if we should flip it. And that sounds like he's just hitting the. I don't know about how he's doing yeah. his work, but it just... Well, I'm sure it's all time and effort. Yeah, and it's and it's like, it's not that he has to be here every day, anymore. but yeah. he, he does critical phases, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think that piece is very valuable. And and we can ask Jason if there's some other methodology, but based on what they told us last time, right. they've never seen this right. done ever, and they've worked on you know hundreds and hundreds of projects. They've never seen this tried to be accomplished uh, in the way that we, they were trying to do it. Um, I mean, we literally saw them, you know, early on, and that's what kind of got me frustrated, was duct taping and, and putting up plastic. pieces of plastic to do an envelope test. And I'm saying, how accurate can that be? Wait for that. Yeah, and then our, our money, our, our, our numbers are coming back three, four times what they're supposed to be. And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> you're testing with plastic and duct tape. So yeah. I felt it was, uh, you know, 
not what we were mm -hmm. sold, and uh, I thought it was prudent to stop them quickly. So that's, uh, but we'll make a decision next next meeting. So we'll put that up in the corner. Please, yeah. please. Anybody else? Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Kaczynski first. Second. Mr. Kramer second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you for your attendance.